Well, welcome back. We've tackled some important retirement planning topics like avoiding common mistakes and the evolving nature of retirement. But let's talk now about what's really going to hit you in the wallet, retirement expenses. It's essential to have a handle on what you'll be spending to make sure your hard-earned savings will last, okay? So what are some of the common expenses that Zoomers might not think about when they're planning for their retirement, Renee? Well, I think when you look at uh, retirement expenses, you have to think of it as a U-shape. All right, so the top of the U, you know, you've just finished working and you, or you might still be bringing in income and then you've got that sort of retirement where your expenses have dropped, but then it starts ticking back up as you get older, right? Because you're going to have healthcare expenses to deal with, you may need care. So you might want to bring in a PSW, personal support worker, or you may consider going into a long-term care home, or if you want to age in place, you may actually have to update your home to make it more accessible. So those will, those will come as we get older, and that is something that I think a lot of people aren't aware of, especially mm -hmm. just the cosmetic changes to your home, for example. People don't realize, Bill, the cost of health care as we get older. Yes, we don't, and we don't understand the needs that are going to be there, and what uh, has to uh, what has to change. Uh, as we just mentioned, uh, uh, most people would like to stay at home as long as they can, but the the cost of funding your own home care uh, is tremendous, and governments don't uh, look after people well in their own uh, communities. So money for that, family funded. Uh, Home care is, is an issue that's going to face uh, everyone. If you're going to move into a residence, that gives extra cost too. And there's there's still a feeling among many older Canadians and, and, and not quite so old that when I get older, the government will look after me. And that's just not going to happen. Okay, so Rob, for those that are listening right now to this conversation and think, I could find myself in that position, what advice do you have for them? <sighs> You know, this is probably one of the toughest conversations you can ever have because you never know when you're going to get sick. You never know oh, what costs are associated with that because you want to stay home. Everybody wants to stay in their own home. And so the conversation really evolves to, do you have a plan in place with an emergency fund to actually cover those costs? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have a plan in place, Government really doesn't help you out that so much. So you need a contingency plan. You do need a contingency plan. With an emergency fund. With an emergency fund. And you have to be very much aware of what these cost. When do you start to build that contingency fund? Uh, I, I think now. you have to, it's yeah. now. Well, it's, it's it, interesting, yeah, you say that. So when we did our surveys, um, most people start saving around 38 for retirement and they all wish they had started around 30, or 27, sorry, so a whole decade earlier. And then on top of that, what um, we found out is the average gap between your lifespan and your health span, so meaning you're healthy, there's the, the gap between when you're healthy and when you're not, is 11 years. And so if you think about the amount that, Rob, you're discussing, are you planning an emergency fund that could be required for up to 11 years. I mean, that's that's a long time. Well, the time. other issue is when you invest in your retirement, you're putting it into an RSP, but then at 71, you need to begin to draw down on it because it converts to a RIF. And that's a whole other issue because now the risk is you may outlive your savings when you're forced to draw down on it. Isn't that the case? Yes, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, again, it really depends on your situation, right? There are some people who, you know, aren't going to live to 100. And so, yes, drawing down is actually beneficial because then they get to live the life that matters to them. Mm -hmm. And it's always that balance, right? It's what matters to me, what's important to me, and how do I want to live? So thus, I want to, you know, project my savings and my spending accordingly. We don't want people to sit around hoarding their money, hoping for one day to spend it, and then unfortunately get sick and not be able to use it either, right? It's finding that balance. You're still working, Monica, but... Have you been surprised by any expenses? N not so far. I mean, life is expensive. I mean, we talked about grocery stores, sticker shock every time you pick up a, a, a cauliflower. Um, <laughs> however, at, at this point in time, I'm working. I love working. It's what I do. My husband loves working. Um, uh, what I imagine, I, this isn't our story, but I spoke to a, a, a hair a hairdresser the other day who turned 80 and he's still working and he's still got a reputation, a great reputation. And he said to me, he said, here's the problem. He said, I'm still on my game, but what young people want to come to an 80 year old hairdresser, even if, I, and, and I thought about that. And that applies to so many people. And all this talk about what we should have done at 30, there's a whole swath of people who did not do that at 30. And so what do we do? to how can, I mean, at this moment in time, I actually do have an investment portfolio 
Yes, not a big one, but I'm thrilled that I have it. I'm asking, what do people do? Your average person who hasn't planned and is now sitting in this panic position saying a million point seven? Like, that's not attainable. Well, the first step is that it's never too late, right? It's, it's start now. Go and speak to someone. Find a professional that you can trust who has the credentials and, and begin having that discovery conversation around what matters to you. So it really isn't just dollars and cents, right? Because as we talked about, it's how you want to live your life and how you want to be with your family and, and what your values are. So have those discussions now and then start to map out what is possible. There are tools and technology that financial advisors and planners use now to help you map out and understand what is possible and, and what trade-offs you can make along the way. And our, our newest research coming out with AgeWave um, actually talks about that financial resilience. And what we're finding is that all um, older adults are telling us, Canadians are telling us, it pays to be prepared and to be adaptable and flexible and resilient in your in your later years. Can you talk to a friend of mine for me? Sure. Because I swear, like <laughs> once a month, to. once a month, she's like, I, you know, I should really start saving for retirement and get on Wealth Simple because we're talking about Wealth Simple, not a promotion. Um, <laughs> and I. My, myself and another friend were like, yes, you should actually start saving for retirement. She's in her late 30s. And there's just this block. Yeah. Right? Isn't it Last just, word to you, Rob. Isn't it just, you have to talk to someone else. Mm -hmm. Get an opinion. Mm -hmm. Ask the questions. And don't be shy to ask multiple people the exact same question. Because the hardest thing is getting started. And when you think about what can you do as you're, you know, in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and you haven't started saving, you have to be asking the question because you still have an awful lot of time. You see, you, life does not stop at 65. Life actually continues for another 30 uh, long years. We can hope. <laughs> we can hope. All right, on that note, we need to take a quick break. When we return, how Zoomers can break free from irrational saving and start enjoying their hard-earned money next.